Welcome. Uh, this video describes querying APIs using R. So first, uh, what is an API? So we're in this section where we're talking about reading in data. So an API is just, it stands for Application Programming Interface, and it's just a way for computers to talk to each other, essentially. And they can be really useful for getting data or maybe um, supplying certain parameters to a model and getting the output of that model. And uh, really what we're going to look at it for in this case is um, grabbing some data from different places like the Census Bureau. Later in the semester, we'll actually build our own API that will allow us to build a model and then send it information, and it will, say, return a prediction or, or something like that. So um, API, basically a set of um, communication protocols and tools for discussing and returning information. Okay. And so every API is slightly different, um, and really you just need to understand how to talk back and forth with that API. Um, APIs are kind of, uh, whenever you're just talking about grabbing data, they're essentially like an abstraction of um, a database. So you don't have to worry about what kind of database you're querying. You're just um, using a basically a URL most of the time to, um, to, to request a certain type of data. So for instance, the Census API is out there, and there are tons of different data sets um, that the Census API has. So um, here's the different data sets' names, and they have different years to them. Um, and you can see that this is a huge web page, right? There's tons and tons of different data sets out there. Um, and so an example um, API call here, well, this is the base URL to get to this particular data set. And you just need to put extra things on top of this URL. So you need to extend this URL in order to uh, actually get information that you might want. So here are a couple examples. Um, so this is your base URL for getting to that table. And then you run usually a git command, which is then going to um, say, you know, I want to get some information from this table. And that's going to be very dependent on um, the API that you're using, what goes next. So in this case, um, these are some of the things that you might ask for here. And then usually what you need also is a key to access the API. And so if you want to get data from the Census Bureau, um, you need to register for a key. It's free. Um, but this essentially allows them to track who's grabbing their data and, you know, a lot of places put limits on how much data you can grab in a, in a day or in an hour. Um, they don't want you to just be querying them constantly and constantly. So this gives them a way to track you. But again, this is really just a URL with appropriate um, sort of information in the right spots to go and query this database and grab the information from this particular, for this particular table. And so, for instance, what this particular URL returns, let's see if it'll come up. Oh, not coming up. Let's try this one. Okay, so this one, um, it returns a JSON um, file. And you can see the raw data here. It has a couple different um, values to it. And here's the associated things for those. So um, again, uh, APIs aren't anything crazy. It's just a, a way for computers to talk to one another. Generally, what we're doing with an API is we're going to supply a URL with particular values in it that tells it what to return. Um, so uh, R, unfortunately, doesn't have as many um, sort of packages that are created for you to go in and contact um, as many APIs as some other languages. So there is a package to, um, to contact the Census API that somebody has written called Census API. But say in Python, there are tons and tons of packages and tons and tons of um, uh, ways that people have created to contact lots of different APIs. In R, you kind of have to do it yourself a lot of times. And while it's not too bad, it does kind of stink that you don't have sort of the somebody who's already worked out all the kinks for you. Um, so if you want to follow along with this example and run this code yourself, you're going to need to go get, get your own um, API key for the census. And so you can go and request one. It's free. Um, it does take a little while to get it, but um, you can certainly go and do that. No problem. And so once you've done that, you'll be able to follow along with um, the code that you'll see here. So I've installed the census API package, and now I'm reading it in. And with that package, there's a function called list census APIs. And so this just gives you um, the different um, sort of ta uh, data tables that you can go and contact. And so just looking at the first few of them, you can see that here's the title uh, and the vintage, which is the year. Here's the URL to get to it and some other information as well. And um, the function that allows us to actually get some data back is called get census. 
And what this is going to do is it's going to, you're going to supply it the appropriate arguments, and then it's going to build a URL that it then goes and contacts the census API with, and then it will return the data in a data frame. So exactly what you'd want to do. Um, now for most of your census API calls, there are a few things that you need. Um, one is the name of the table that you're going to grab. Vintage would be the data set year and vars would be the list of variables to pull back from that table. And then region, um, like you know, the whole country, states, et cetera, that you want to get the data for. And so we're gonna follow the vignette example from the uh, census API package. And so what we're gonna do is try to get um, uninsured rates by income group using this small area health insurance estimates table. So that's gonna be referred to as SEHI, or small area health insurance estimates table. Um, so we're going to contact that API and get some information about uninsured rates by income group. So in terms of what we needed over here, right, we needed the name of the table, we need the year, variables, and region. So the name of the table, say he. Um, the vintage, uh, and that's time. So this API, we're going to use 2016. And then VARs and region, those are things that we're going to specify as we go here. Okay. First, um, let's look at some of the values that we could specify for those. So there's list census metadata. So metadata is, of course, data about data. So this is going to give us information about a particular table. And so the name of the table is here. So we want to know information about this table. So what are the variables in this case that we could query? So um, this gives a list of variables that you could grab and a little bit of information about them. And so, um, you know, what we wanted to do, uninsured rates by income group. So we're going to be able to pull the number of insured um, and then income range. So we're going to be able to pull some of these variables that um, we want. So the variables we'll grab from that list, I've listed them here. Now what we're going to do, um, look at the geography, right? We needed four things. We have the name, the vintage, the variables we want. Now we need to say what level of geography we want to return. So again, we should um, look at this table and see what's available for us. So we can do that with that census metadata function. And so the geography values that we can grab is either for the entire country, for the counties, or for the states. And so now we have all the pieces we need to um, utilize this um, get census function. So we're going to give it the name of the table that we want the variables that we want to grab, the region, and this is a special way to, to specify that region, the time, and then you have to put in your API key here. Um, so this code won't run for you unless you go and get your own API key and plug it in there. But you can see this then returns um, these six observations. So across the United States in 2016, um, based off of your income level, um, the percent that are uninsured right here. So that's kind of cool, right? I mean, you just got some census data with uh, a couple lines of R code. Oh, darn it, I left in my census key here. Don't look at that, um, ignore that. But now we can get the uh, states here as well. So this is now gonna be by state level. So we have Alabama, Alaska, yada, yada, yada. And so you're gonna have that for all your different incomes as you go. So for every one of these, um, we're gonna have an Alabama, an Alaska, Arizona, et cetera. And so, I mean, if this isn't too crazy, right? What this function is doing, um, what this get census function is doing is it's essentially constructing a URL in the background. So it's grabbing the name of the table that you gave it, the vintage, which is the year. And so it's pasting together character strings that are sort of the base URL, name of the table, um, you know, whatever variables you want are gonna be attached on later. So it's doing, you know, do I need to put a question mark? Do I need to put a slash? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So it's just building a URL for you. Okay, and that's all that um, these kinds of packages that are uh, that people have created do. They've just worked through all the kinks of how do I um, easily call these different tables and get different variables for you. That being said, um, although there are not tons of different APIs um, for that are built out for R, um, as you know there are for say Java or Python, it's really actually pretty easy to do your do it yourself. Okay. And so um, basically here are the, the steps that they give you. You just need two packages, 
HTTR, which is a package that's used for um, connecting and uh, talking back and forth with the internet, and uh, JSON Lite. So most of the time, these APIs are going to return a JSON file. And so um, this article actually goes through just the general process for um, building your own API, uh, your own queries through um, to query a particular API. So it's really not too bad. I mean, that same website actually gives a list of APIs that are out there um, that you might want to think about querying. So recap, we now know how to read in most any kind of data that you're going to come across. Um, we've talked about flat files, delimited files, um, Excel databases, uh, talking to APIs. The main thing we didn't cover was the idea of web scraping. So um, we didn't go into if you if a website does not have an API that gives you a way to get data. The traditional way of, of dealing with that is to then just go in and scrape the data from the website itself. Um, and that's a usually pretty involved process. Um, so we're not going to cover that, but you should now be able to read in most types of data into R. 